pink. And let me move this to full screen so you can get a full view of the board. All right, so what we're talking about is we're going to talk about the principles and the actual operation of an air conditioning system. All right, what I've got on the board, and hopefully you can see this pretty well, is I have two drawings on the board that look almost identical. And for all practical purposes, they are. All right, the, um, they're just two different types of systems we use for air conditioning. They operate on the same principles. It's just that one has a variable orifice, and we'll get into that, and the other one has a fixed orifice um, for vaporizing the, uh, the refrigerant. All right. And what we need to understand before we understand anything is the principle that air conditioning works on, cooling and drying the air, all right, is latent heat. We're not really cooling anything. We're removing heat from it, and therefore it becomes cool. All right. So um, heat travels from a warm surface to a cold surface. When you touch something that's cold, it's not that you're feeling something that's cold. I know that sounds funny. What's happening is heat is rushing away from your hand into that, and it makes your hand cool, all right? This is what air conditioning does. It carries heat away, all right? And then it gives up heat. And as we go through the system, I'll explain what's happening there. How we do that is we use a refrigerant that vaporizes, goes from a liquid to a vapor. That's called a change of state, all right? It goes from a liquid to a vapor at a very low temperature, all right? At room temperature, it actually vaporizes, all right? So what, what we're doing is when it changes state, when it goes from a liquid to a vapor, it absorbs a tremendous amount of heat. I can just take cold water and run it through a pipe. And when I pour air over that pipe, all right? it's going to cool the air. It's going to pull heat out of the air and the water is going to carry it away. But if I change the state of that, all right, it absorbs a lot more heat. And that's what happens with refrigerant. When it changes from a liquid to a vapor, it absorbs up to 1500 BTUs of heat. All right. That's a unit of measurement for heat. So it absorbs up to 1500 BTUs of heat. And then when I send it outside up to the condenser in the front of the vehicle, and we'll go through that on the diagram, it changes back from a vapor to a liquid. And when it changes from a vapor to a liquid, it does just the opposite. It gives up heat. So basically what I'm doing is inside the car, I'm hugging heat, all right? And then I carry it outside the car, and then I give it up to the outside air. All right, so that's what's happening in an air conditioning system. I'm absorbing heat inside the car, and I'm giving it up. I'm sending it out in the outside air, so I'm pulling heat away from the vehicle, the inside of the vehicle. And this is how it operates, all right? The first system I'm going to talk to you about is called a CCOT, and that stands for Cycling Clutch Orifice Tube. Basically, what that means is in order to control the pressures in the system, we're going to cycle a compressor on and off. There are different ways to do it. All right, some use a variable displacement compressor that can change its displacement and vary pressures. But in most cases, it's usually a cycling clutch, and that's the clutch on the compressor. All right, so what we have in this system, in every system practically, is we have a compressor that's going to take a vapor, all right, the refrigerant in the form of a vapor, and it's going to compress it and give it high pressure, and it's going to send it to a condenser where that vapor is going to turn into a liquid. When it turns into a liquid, it's going to give off heat. Now, this condenser is out in front of the radiator. It's like another radiator, all right? It looks similar to one. All right, this is actually a cutaway section of one that Mr. South did last year. It's a series of tubes, all right, with fins in between it, and refrigerant runs through those tubes. And as it runs through those tubes and it cools, it turns back into a liquid and it gives up heat to the atmosphere. All right. So when it goes through there, that happens and it comes out a high pressure liquid. And then it goes to what's called an orifice tube. All right. And an orifice tube looks just like this. I'm going to try and get this close so you can see it. Inside of here, this is a screen that catches debris. All right. You can see this one's got a few little tiny pieces in it. All right, and inside of there, if you can see, there's a little tube. Maybe if I back out, yep, now you can see it. You can see the tube in there. That's the orifice. That's the orifice that 
the uh, liquid under pressure is sent through. And when it goes through that tube, what happens to it is it becomes a, a low pressure mist. No differently than what I'm going to do with this spray bottle. And this is kind of the principle that air conditioning works under. All right. I, I take high pressure. When I pump this, I'm going to create pressure in here. And I'm going to send it through a little nozzle, a small orifice. And what's going to come out is I've got a liquid here. I'm going to pressurize that liquid and I'm going to spray it out of that nozzle. And what I have is, gosh, I don't know if they show up on the video. I have is a mist comes out. It's still a liquid, but it's a mist. And a mist can evaporate quickly. Evaporation is a change of state where it goes from a liquid to a vapor. All right. So I send a high pressure liquid into this orifice. All right. And it comes, it sprays out a mist. And the mist goes to an evaporator core. The evaporator core is very similar to the condenser core. It's a series of tubes with fins. It's a heat exchanger. All right, and what happens is that liquid or that liquid uh, mist goes into that evaporator core, and we're blowing warm air inside the car through that evaporator core that's inside your heater box. All right, and that warm air, all right, the heat gets absorbed by the refrigerant going through this evaporator core, and it turns into that's when it changes state and it turns into a vapor. So now it's a gas, it's not liquid anymore, and it absorbs all that heat and hugs that heat, all right? Then it leaves the evaporator core. Now it's a low-pressure vapor, all right? And it goes through something called an accumulator dryer. And when you look under the hood and you see that big can, usually they're painted black or they're silver aluminum. It's a big can with big fat lines going into it. It usually has a little electrical switch sticking out of the side of it. That's called an accumulator dryer. All right, and on a CCOT system, that's used so that it has a desiccant bag in it. That's the same thing with those little packets that come in your shoes, all right, that say, don't eat me, all right? They absorb moisture, all right? There is a desiccant bag inside of that, so if there's any moisture in the refrigerant, it'll absorb it and keep it out, keep the refrigerant dry. And it'll also help evaporate any liquid that could possibly be left in that vapor. All right, before it goes to the compressor. The reason being, we can't compress a liquid, so we got to make sure nothing but vapor gets to this compressor. All right, then my process starts all over again. The compressor takes that low pressure vapor, turns it into a high pressure vapor, sends it into the condenser, where it turns into a high pressure liquid. It changes state and it gives up the heat it absorbed in the evaporator core. All right, and then the whole process starts over again. It goes to the orifice tube, and it makes that mist, all right? And it's just a constant mist, all right? And that's, now it's a low-pressure mist of liquid. It goes into the evaporator core. It changes state, hugs heat, carries that heat out here, finishes its evaporation process in here. That can gets really cold, all right, if you put your hands on it when the air conditioning is on. Goes back to the compressor. It's compressed. High pressure vapor, condenser, turns into a high pressure liquid and just keeps it's a continuous cycle and it's always happening when the air conditioning is on. Now the way it regulates this, all right, is you can see I've got a cross drawn in here, all right? On one side, it says liquid. On the other side, it says vapor. This is considered the liquid side of the diagram or the system this is considered the vapor side of the system. And it's split at the evaporator core and condenser because that's where that change of state takes place. Okay. And then on the other cross, we have low pressure and high pressure. Above this line, everything is low pressure. After it goes through the orifice tube, it becomes a low pressure mist. It goes all the way to the compressor as low pressure. It comes out of the compressor as high pressure goes through the condenser and back to the orifice as high pressure. All right, so we have a high side and a low side. And that's when we put the fittings on the car, and I'll be producing a video that shows you that. There's low side fittings and there's high side fittings. The low side fittings are measuring the low pressure, and we'll show you that on gauges. And the high side are measuring the high pressures on the high side. All right, the way we regulate that is, 
your high pressure, there are charts and there is a chart in the air conditioning information. The high pressure is usually somewhere in the vicinity of two times to three times what the ambient temperature is. So if the ambient temperature is 80 degrees outside, generally it'll be somewhere between 160 and 240 pounds per square inch for the high side. The difference there between that low and high is the humidity. It's humidity sensitive. So if it's very humid out, the pressure will be at the high side. If it's not humid out, the pressure will be at the low side. All right. So a general rule of thumb, two to three times the ambient temperature is what your high pressure is going to be. All right. Depending on humidity, your low pressure is going to be between 24 and 45 PSI. Ideal is usually right around 30. So what will happen is in a CCOT system is the compressor sends this high pressure um, liquid to the orifice tube and it sprays through there. All right. And the system is operating in that cycle that I talked about. And there's a pressure switch in this um, accumulator. That's that little, so the little two wires that come out of a little electrical connector on the accumulator. That's called the low pressure switch for air conditioning. And what that does is it watches the low side pressure. And basically what's happening is the low side pressure while the compressor is engaged is going down, all right, because the compressor is pulling. There's a suction side. It's actually pulling from this side. And then there's a, a pressure side, all right? So it, the pressure is actually dropping as the compressor is running. When it gets down to about 24, 26 PSI, the compressor shuts off. When it shuts off because it's not pulling anymore, pressure starts bleeding through here and the pressure starts going up on the low side. When it gets up around 45 PSI, all right, the compressor will kick back on and start pulling again and the pressure will start dropping in the low side. So it's constantly cycling up and down, all right? That's what's happening. And when you're sitting at a light with your air conditioning on and you hear click, you know, and you might hear the engine bobble just a little bit, and then you hear another click and you hear the engine bobble a little bit. If you put your hand in front of the vents when that's happening, you'll notice that when you hear the first click, that's a compressor kicking off, all right? The air conditioning will start getting warm. That's the pressure getting a little high in the evaporator core. It's actually getting a little higher, and it makes it harder. Remember, when we, when we put pressure on a liquid, it boils at a higher point, so it changes state at a higher point, just like in a cooling system. All right. So as the pressure goes up, it's not as efficient. All right. So then when you hear the next click, when the compressor kicks back on, you'll feel the air conditioning air getting colder. All right. That's because the pressure is dropping back down in here and it gets cooler. All right. So that's what's happening. The compressor is cycling on and off and the pressure is rising and falling as it as it uh, cycles on and off in the low side. All right. Now, when we go to the other system, and that's, that's it. That's all that's happening. That's what's happening in an air conditioning system. When we go to the other side, all right, this is called a TXV or thermal expansion valve system. And this is probably the most common system today. They're getting more and more common. We used to use a lot of orifice tube, and now they've gone to a thermal expansion valve. And this is what a thermal expansion valve is. It actually takes the place of the orifice tube, but it's it's a variable orifice. You can't you really probably can't see much in there, but in here you can see that there's a little blade in here that's blocking the orifice or part of the orifice, and this side is wide open. All right, this is called a thermal expansion valve block. The old thermal expansion valves were a valve with a variable orifice, and it had a capillary tube that went to the evaporator core, and it measured temperature in the evaporator core. And that's how it decided how big the orifice was going to be. All right. So then they went to a block and they run the outlet of the evaporator through this side and the inlet through this side so that it can measure the outside, the, the output pressure and temperature of the evaporator and it can adjust the orifice accordingly. So this system works the same way. All right. I've got a compressor that takes... Uh, a low pressure gas and turns it into a high pressure gas or vapor, all right, sends it to a condenser core where it changes state to a high pressure liquid 
it leaves a condenser core. And now instead of having a, an accumulator after the evaporator, we have a receiver dryer, all right, after the condenser that dries the uh, refrigerant. Uh, it's just a different setup, all right? And um, because this is a little bit more efficient, this system, we don't have to worry about um, liquid getting out of the evaporator core because this is going to take care of that. All right, so it goes through a receiver dryer, and the receiver dryer just has desiccant in it to help dry the refrigerant in case there's any moisture in it. It is a sealed system, but it is possible for some moisture to uh, get into the uh, refrigerant. All right, and then it goes to the expansion valve. The expansion valve has an orifice that's not fixed like the orifice tube. It's variable. All right, so when it comes out of there, again, it's a mist, just like with the spray bottle. It comes out of there a mist, goes to the evaporator core. It changes from a mist of liquid to a vapor or gas, all right, and goes back to the compressor. Exact same thing. The pressures are the same. Everything's the same. The only difference is instead of cycling the clutch to maintain our, our, our pressures and our temperatures, what happens is this thermal expansion valve is actually measuring pressure and it's measuring the temperature coming out of the evaporator core and it just varies that orifice. If it's starting to get too low, all right, it'll open the orifice a little and that'll raise the pressures in the low side and it'll start to, it won't cool as much. It'll, it'll start getting a little warmer. All right, and then as it gets to the point where it's getting a little warmer, then it'll vary it back down, all right, and it'll shrink that orifice and make the mist finer, and our pressures will start to drop again. So if you monitor the pressures in a, uh, a thermal expansion valve system, you'll see them just changing and the compressor running continuously. So that's the difference. Instead of uh, cycling the compressor to control my pressures, I change the size of the orifice and I can continuously vary the size of the orifice, all right, in order to regulate the pressures in the system. Those are the two systems that you see on vehicles. Now, there are variations. Um, some compressors are fixed displacement. They displace so much and that's it. You know, they might use pistons or they might use a wobble plate or something special to make them operate, all right. Um, and some actually have a variable displacement. The Regal doesn't have a low pressure switch on it. Instead, it uses the compressor variable displacement to change the pressures in the system to raise or lower the pressures. All right. The problem with pressures is if they get too low, the evaporator core will get so cold, at least pressures in the evaporator core, I should say. If it gets too low, the evaporator core will get so cold that the condensation on it will freeze and it will actually block the airflow through the evaporator. And you may hear this, um, somebody goes on a long trip or it might be a trip up to Tampa on the weekend and it's a real super humid day and they got the air conditioning cranking all the way up to Tampa. They get about two thirds of the way up and air stops blowing out of the vents. They're getting no airflow. And then after 10 minutes or five minutes of that, all of a sudden airflow starts coming back through the vents. What happened is they're probably a little low on their refrigerant charge. So their pressures are running lower than normal. And the evaporator core got so cold that it actually froze the condensation on it and air couldn't get through the evaporator core. So basically you've got water running off of this. Remember the puddles on the ground, all right? So we've got water running off of the evapor or the evaporator core, and it just freezes. It turns to a block of ice, all right? And then what happens is the warm air just keeps pelting that, and it'll eventually thaw, and the air conditioning might start working again. Or they may have to turn the air conditioning off for a short time, and then it'll thaw on its own with the hot air hitting it. And then, boof, they can turn the air conditioning back on and it'll start working again. Oh, look, you can see right through that. Cool. All right. So um, that's what's going on in the air conditioning system. All right. It's really very simple when you get down to it. All right. And the way that works is if you've ever eaten in an outside restaurant that has misters, all right, what's happening is 
they have little fans and they've got a water line and the water line is shooting the water through a real small orifice so that it makes a spray just like that. All right. When that spray goes out into the air, because it's a mist, a very fine mist, it starts evaporating right away and it's absorbing heat. When it hits you, it evaporates right away and it's absorbing heat. And it's making you feel cool. That's what's going on inside the air conditioning system. That mist, when it goes through that evaporator core, it changes state. It turns into a gas of vapor. And when it changes state, it absorbs a ton of BTUs of heat. It hugs them. It grabs them. And it carries them out through that compressor and out to the condenser. And then when it changes back into a liquid, oof, it gives them up. All right? And they just end up in the outside air. That's why when we turn on our air conditioning, the cooling fan is running constantly. All right, the cooling fan runs constantly so that air is always going through that condenser core, carrying that heat away. If that fan stops operating and we're sitting at a light, our air conditioning will start getting real warm. Why? Because we're not going to change back to a liquid because it's going to get so hot at the condenser core, it's going to stay a vapor and our air conditioning is going to lose all of its efficiency. It's not going to be able to give up heat to the outside air. When we're moving down the road, all right, air is automatically flowing through there, so it'll work fine. So if you get somebody that says, gosh, when I'm driving down the road, my air conditioning is great. It's cold. Ooh, it freezes us right outside the, out of the car. When we come to a stop, it starts getting really hot in the car. Chances are the cooling fan isn't working. That's the number one cause of that. All right, that cooling fan is always pushing air through that condenser and helping carry that heat away so it can change back into a liquid and go through the cycle again. That's all there is to air conditioning. As complicated as it kind of seems when you're looking at everything under the hood and everything, that's all that's going on. I'm taking a vapor or a liquid and I'm spraying a mist of liquid into an evaporator core. It evaporates, it hugs heat, it grabs heat, it carries it through the compressor, goes with a high pressure vapor into a condenser, gives up the heat into the atmosphere, and then starts the whole process over again. And there's only two ways we do it in a car with a thermal expansion valve called the TXV. All right. The old thermostat, thermostatic expansion valves were just half of this. Basically, it was a little valve and had a little cap on it and it had a long capillary tube, uh, like a copper tube coming off it with a bulb on the end. And that bulb was pressed right against the evaporator core with a, a, a glob of black gook. And what was happening is as the evaporator core was getting really cold, it would open the orifice up. It would sense that and open the orifice up to raise the pressures a little bit in the evaporator core. And then when it started to warm up, oop, it would shrink it back down. All right, so that the pressures would drop. And that's how we regulated the, uh, the temperature. All right, and then we went to the block where the inlet from the evaporator and the outlet go through the same block. So it's monitoring what's coming out. So it, it knows what to do with what's going in. And with the orifice tube, it's just a fixed tube, and in most cases, we just cycle the clutch on and off on the compressor to raise and lower the pressures and make it operate, all right? And that's how air conditioning works. It's basically that simple, all right? So when you're thinking about air conditioning, it might even when you get in your car and you start your car up and you turn your air conditioning on and you feel it gradually get cool coming out of the vents, that's what's happening. That cycle is starting. When I shut the car off, you might hear a hissing sound, all right, under the hood. That hissing sound is I've got high pressure on this side. I've got low pressure on this side. When I shut the system off, high pressure is naturally going to run to low pressure, so it's running through this orifice. That's what the hissing is, and the pressure is dropping on the high side, and it's raising on the low side. And when I show you charging a vehicle, a video of that out at the vehicle, what you're going to see is when we hook the gauges up static with the car off, it's going to be between 90 and 110 PSI on both sides of the system. All right. When we start it up and this starts sucking refrigerant out and it can't replace it as fast through the orifice. All right. And it builds pressure on this side. The pressure will drop on the low side and raise on the high side. What you hear when you shut the car off and you hear that hissing sound is you're hearing the system equalize. The high pressure side is rushing to the low pressure side until they become the same. And then I have between 90 and 110 PSI just sitting still. All right.
that's air conditioning. That's all there is to it. In your house, it works the same way. All right. Outside is your condenser with a big fan in it, just like the radiator fan. All right. Inside your house is an evaporator core and an air handler that blows cold air into your house. All right. It's actually pulling warm air out of your house through return vents, pulling the heat out of that air and sending it cooled back into your house. All right. You'll see lines coming out of that condenser outside going up to the air handler. That's the refrigerant running through it. All right. And there's an orifice in there. All right. Usually a thermal expansion belt type of orifice. All right. That's regulating the pressures on the high and low side. Same thing that you have. All right. Your refrigerator operates the same way. All right. It uses refrigerant and it has a compressor and it has an orifice and it has a condenser and an evaporator. The evaporator's inside. All right. There's one in the freezer. There's one in the uh, refrigerator. All right. And we can vary those to maintain the temperature inside and outside. If you've ever pulled the back off of a refrigerator, there's a big, huge thing of tubes. That's your condenser core on the back of the refrigerator. So that's it's operating under the same principles. All right. They use different refrigerant. All right. But it operates under the same principles. Uh, same with your home air conditioning. All right. So now you know how air conditioning works, and you're an expert at it. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about that? Does it make sense to you? Does it work for you? Is it possibly simpler than you thought it might have been? A little more simple. Hmm? What's that? It's, it's simplified. Yeah, it, it, it really is fairly simple. I mean, there isn't a lot going on. And I put several videos from YouTube in the air conditioning topic. All right. And I'm looking at the speaker. That's why I'm looking off to the side. Um, I put several uh, videos from YouTube into the air conditioning topic. And those show the cycle and what's happening. And it's, it's good graphics. You know, like all the YouTube videos, you know, there's good graphics in there. And they're showing you what's happening and stuff and explaining it. And it's usually some cool guy with an English accent. But um, uh, if, if you watch those videos, it'll help you understand it even more. I wanted you to see it like this because this is just an easy diagram. All right. This is being recorded. And I'm going to post it in the topic so that anybody can watch it and see the, uh, the same demonstration that I just did. Um, uh, and, and generally in class, what I would do is I would have had you open your notebooks and draw these two diagrams. All right. So that you would have it and you could always just look at it and say, oh, this is how it works. Once you understand it and you've looked at it a few times or whatever, it makes it a lot easier to understand how air conditioning works. You know, there's no mystery or anything like that. It um, it's pretty obvious. I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. All right. It's all based on latent heat. We're absorbing heat and then we're giving heat up. All right. And the way we do that is by changing state of the refrigerant. When it changes state, it absorbs a lot of BTUs. You can run something cold through a pipe, but it's only going to absorb so much heat as it's going by. All right. When you change state, all right, it has to absorb a ton of heat to do that in order to change from a liquid to a vapor. All right. Just like when you boil water and the steam comes up, when it changes to steam, that's a lot of heat leaving. All right. That's why steam is so hot. All right. It's not just boiling water. It's absorbing a ton of heat. And that water turns into a vapor, a gas and shoop, and it rises off, off the pan. All right. If you put a cold plate over that, all right, or just held the plate over at room temperature, all right, that liquid would condense on it. It would change back, and in the process, it would warm the plate, and the plate would be giving that heat up to the atmosphere. All right, that's what's going on. It's that simple. We're changing state, we're absorbing a lot of heat, and then changing state again and giving up a lot of heat. All right, does that work for everybody? Hopefully that helped you understand it a little bit more. And... Um, That'll, that'll be enough to get you started as far as air conditioning goes. I'm going to produce a video today where I show what's going on in the system, and you'll actually be able to watch the pressures on gauges. And I'm going to start with a vehicle with a low charge in it so you see what low pressures look like. And then we'll put a full charge in it, and you'll see what the pressures look like when they're supposed, where, they're, where they're supposed to be. 
all right, when there's a proper amount of refrigerant. It's another day I get to play with the Regal. And <laughs> we started yesterday, but my phone my phone blew up on me, and uh, I had to restart it, and it, it wouldn't video or anything like that. I think I'm using it too much. <laughs> all right, so that's the way it works, all right? And you've got the basics now, and we'll build on the basics.